Hi, Colin. Welcome to the Content 10X podcast. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you today. Um, so firstly, could you introduce yourself, please, to the audience? Yeah, sure. My name is Colin Gray. I'm the founder of the podcast host.com, which is basically just a, a website I started about six or seven years ago, writing about podcasting skills, podcasting resources, a lot of stuff about equipment, mm-hmm. geeky career and shiny things. Um, and it grew up over the years into quite a big resource, one of the sort of biggest on the net around podcasting. Um, and these days, really, we've got that site as our cornerstone. And then we do a uh, a coaching membership around that as well, which um, we've got a community that learn how to podcast with us. And we also run an app called Alitu, which is designed to make it easy to uh, produce and publish a podcast. Oh, great. Thanks, Colin. Um, I, having recently just launched this podcast, I love your website. And pretty much every time I Google any question about podcasting, um, whether it's what mic to use or whatever it is, I, I, you tend to return as one of the first, second or so um, returns, which just goes to show you are literally the authority online when it comes to all things podcast related. <laughs> um, so I wanted to bring you on the show today and um, to talk about repurposing podcasts, because I know that it's something that you do really well and you've come up with a uh, a method for the content stacking approach and um, what I wanted to just talk through really is I guess like firstly um, how do you go about um, the, this, the approach that you have for repurposing your podcast episodes? Yeah so we we do five different shows now and we tend to do we do them all differently they're all they're all varied in terms of the workflow but when we were doing the numbers game in particular, so the numbers game is a show that's um, it's on hiatus just now actually, but the first season I wanted to do it in the most fully repurposable way that we could. So I wanted that to go out in every single medium in a really good way. Um, the way I did it was we wanted it to be video, podcast and text because the way I see it is that text is kind of your, you know, your wide net. That's that's where you reach the most people. It's the easiest way to be found. It's the easiest way for people to get into your stuff because you can just find a blog post quickly, answer a question, skim through it and find the stuff. So it's useful to have a really good blog post out there, but then a video on there as well, because that's a way to kind of up the engagement. People, you know, they read about the text and then they watch the video and they get about your personality. So they learn a bit more about you and that grows the trust, the, the loyalty, the knowing you. And from there, once they know you a bit more, that's when I think you can get them to listen to the podcast. So I wanted that to be in the blog post as well and encourage people to actually subscribe and then listen to the show because that's that's when you get their attention. That's when they listen for half an hour at a time, become really loyal fans because they spend time with you. They get to know you and they get to trust you. And that's when people are actually, you know, loyal subscribers that come back again and again. So that's kind of, that's why I wanted to do all three. So um, do you want to go into, I mean, it, it, what's the most interesting thing? So going into actually how we produce that. that yeah, like, so what would be that interesting is, um, so which which is your, do you start with, like the whole chicken and egg? So like, yeah, with, yeah. yeah what's your ordering process for that? Yeah, the mm-hmm. order the order of it is first, it's the idea. So it's the content idea. And I yeah. think a lot of people devalue this bit. They kind of think that, you know, what are we going to speak about next? And it's kind of a last minute process. You know, you sit down in front of the mic and you go, oh, what are we, what are we going to talk about this week? No idea. Uh, oh, that one. And then you just talk about it. But that's that's kind of, I think that's when people don't get the most value out of the ideas they have, of the questions they've got, all that kind of stuff. Because it comes down to you have to sit down and you have to think about, you know, what are the most common questions I've been asked just now? Pick something out um, and start to break it down. So, a common one we get is um, what's the best microphone for podcasting? So we could do a, a whole series on that because it, there's just so much in there. Like we could do an episode on dynamic mics, on uh, USB mics, on condenser mics, on how to set up the recording environment to make sure you get the most out of your mic, all of that stuff. So there's so much planning goes into this. And that's where it starts for me. I, I pick out a question. Uh, I tend to always break them down. So I'll break it down into maybe seven or eight or nine or 10 episodes, which turns into a season. But take one episode, say, say I do break it down to condenser mics. I'll just create a bullet point outline for that. Okay. I'll say, right, what what type do you choose? Maybe there's a budget version, an intermediate version, an advanced version. How do you set it up? What, what do you look for in a good condenser mic? And that would be the outline for okay. the content idea. 
I don't call it an outline for the podcast. I don't call it an outline for a blog post or a video because it's it's going to be the outline for them all, basically. Yeah. So yeah. That is the content idea, the outline that you create, and that is the first. That's where I start because that's going to be the outline for every single bit of content you create. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly what I I just did an episode actually on thinking of it as a concept as opposed to um, that piece of content, starting with the concept and then you can use that concept in different mediums and whichever you choose, you know, first turning those bullet points into a blog post, it's the primary content, but then um, there's all the other versions after. So, um, So you said about how you have the written version and you have um, the, you know, then turn it to the audio and the video. Now on the numbers, um, the numbers game, um, if the numbers game, yeah, you, I yeah. watched that, I really enjoy that. So you, you record yourself actually um, filming the podcast episode base. That's how you hit video and podcast at the same time, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And we do that with podcraft as well. So okay. um with the numbers game it was a pretty involved method whereby we'd break each each episode up like each episode of the the numbers game was made up of four sections basically we'd have the uh the introduction so that would actually just be a kind of summary of the episode so we could actually cut that out on its own as a video just a one minute video which was like this is what's coming up on this episode and that would kind of stand alone it would entice people into watching the rest of it or listening to the the podcast or going to read the blog post about it then we'd have the story segment that was like the story of our last week what happened in the last week or so then we had the uh, experiment so we were always running an experiment that was the whole thing around the numbers game is that there was an experiment every week we're testing something out then you had the tasks so that was what people should actually do with what we just taught them so we had those segments uh, that made up a full half hour episode Therefore, when you broke it up, you would record it on video and record it on audio, but you don't really want to put out a half hour video because it just doesn't really suit the medium. People aren't half as often up for sitting and watching a half hour video as they are to watch, to listen to a half hour podcast. Half an hour in a podcast is nothing. That's just pretty standard because of the, the nature of the medium. But really you want to keep your videos to five to 10 minutes, say even shorter actually, if you can. So that's why we broke it down like that so that we had, we could get that half hour episode and break it up into shorter videos, really um, leveraging the power of YouTube or the, the power of that medium, which is short, sharp videos, giving a lot of value and building that loyalty. Um, so that was how we did it there. We'd, we'd record it, like you say, on um, DSLR. It was a Nikon camera that's sitting pointing at me right mm-hmm. now. Uh, we'd record it that way. I would put that into Premiere. I would take the audio track off that video and just use that as the podcast. So just rip the audio track straight off, which is easy enough in pretty much any video editing software. Um, and then I would edit up the video to just chop up into the four chunks. Now, we still do that with PodCraft as well. PodCraft's a lot simpler because really PodCraft is our how to podcast podcast Mm -hmm. and it's only maybe 10 to 15 minutes per episode um and what we do is we have our kind of introduction a wee bit of what's going on just now then we'll have a a listener question which is maybe just five minutes or so and then a wee bit more content after that and really with podcraft all i do with that is i film every single one on video i do the same and i take the audio off it and use that as a podcast but i just take that one central chunk which is the listener question, mm-hmm. and that's the video. So we only get one video and one podcast episode out of that, but it's a much more sustainable, easy process. Um, it's a lot less work to do, but we still manage to hit both mediums. So it can be done in either way, I think. But the, I think the key thing is making sure that you're only doing short chunks of video. You're never going to republish the whole thing. It's, it's catering to the strengths of each medium um, and either splitting it up into a few different chunks or just taking one central part. Mm-hmm. And it, is it uh, off again? A question that I have is that um, for the slightly longer episodes that you've saying that you uh, you know you you break the videos down because they you don't want to be putting these really long um, videos out there, which I completely agree with as well in terms of um, I don't I, I don't think that you should just take a whole podcast episode, especially if it's 
kind of over 10 or 15 minutes and just auto put that over onto things like YouTube. So I don't think it's what people necessarily want. So I really, really love this idea. Um, when you do that, um, and you're, are you thinking to yourself when you're, rec- this is a podcast episode, but if yeah. I want certain chunks of it to be broken down, I need to kind of re like sort of introduce sections a bit differently than maybe if it was just a podcast because I know that I want that bit to stand alone and that bit to stand alone and is there a bit of a technique to doing that yeah yeah exactly there is and it's and it doesn't take much to learn it really it's just keeping in mind that you want this bit to stand alone and it actually it's kind of good practice even if you're not doing it because the way you do it is actually just to do proper little nice short sharp introductions to each section so for for the numbers game, for example, for each section, I would say um, something like, uh, so now for the experiment section of the show and blah, 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 blah. So you would, uh, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to cover. And then we're going to do this afterwards. So it's like, it was treating it like, a, you know, like in a radio show, you're listening to the radio. They introduce each segment of the show and uh, and make sure that you know you know what's coming and you can bookend it and the yeah, it just makes it clear to the listener what's going on at any given time so you can do it that way and as soon as you start keeping that in mind it's actually quite easy to do mm. um, and i do the same with podcraft for example we do the introduction to the show we do a bit of the context around it and then when i jump into the listener question i make sure that we're not kind of like stumbling into it we kind of say right okay let's get into the listener segment listener question segment of the show and then I kind of just pause, think about it and say something like this week, the listener question that we got is blah, 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 blah. So I know exactly where I'm going to cut it. I know I'm going to cut it just before that point. So it's just it's just keeping that in mind and making sure that um, you're given a bit of context. You're not just assuming people know exactly what you're talking about. And like I say, it's good practice anyway, because people forget, people zone out um, when they're listening to the whole thing anyway. So it's quite good to just reiterate what you're doing, as long as you're not waffling on for ages. But just reiterate the start of each section, what's going to happen on that section just in 10 seconds, and then fire straight into it. Yeah, I think it's a great, it, it, I think it makes you a better host in a way because like you said, it's almost like radio presentation type skills, which is, um, you know, a really good thing. So no, it makes good sense. And then in terms of where you put the videos, um, yeah. so uh, assuming YouTube, are you, are you using anywhere else to put the videos as well? or? I I use main YouTube is where I put all of the public facing stuff. So stuff that I want people to find. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It just goes on YouTube. I don't put it anywhere else at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I do use Vimeo. So Vimeo is where I put the stuff that I want to keep private more than anything else. Maybe not necessarily private even, but just, you know, stuff that goes into our courses or onto the website and only there. And I don't necessarily want people to find it anywhere else. So yeah, that's the two platforms. Really, just YouTube. Maybe. And not um, not necessarily social media. So not Facebook, Instagram. No, no. I have repurposed videos to Facebook. Um, never to Instagram, but I have repurposed sections of videos to Facebook. It's something I should do more of. It's not something I'm against in any way. It's mm. just not something I've experimented with much yet. Okay, cool. And um, so. What have they been like the results of doing this? Have you got positive feedback from your audience um, with regards to this? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, maybe maybe it's worth just finishing off, just to explain that a little bit, just finishing off how we do it, because the blog post comes in really importantly okay. here as well. Um, and we do, I've done the blog post and related to it in a few different ways, one of which was a numbers game, for example, we had um, another guy working with us at the time and he would actually listen to the episode. He would watch the episode, actually would watch the video and he would actually write out a blog post based on what we were talking about. So we kind of just summarize it, but quite in detail. So I actually did answer the questions of, you know, if somebody's searching for something, it was a standalone blog post. They didn't need to listen to the podcast. They didn't need to watch the videos. It would be useful on its own. And he did that for us. So actually, it was a really good time-saving way of doing it. And it was really easy for him as well because he'd have the outline. We could give him the outline that we'd worked from. Mm -hmm. So he had that as a guide, listen to the show itself to get the really kind of salient points. Um, Maybe a half-hour show, so it doesn't take long to listen through and kind of pause every now and again to write some stuff. So it wasn't a hugely time-consuming process. took him maybe something like an hour to an hour and a half to do a half hour show each week. So it was pretty decent. Um, But obviously that's maybe a luxury a lot of people can't have is to have somebody else doing it for them. Mm -hmm. But 
uh, I mean, the other way to do it is actually just to use your outline. You know, I, I think if you write your blog post as soon as you've recorded your podcast, it actually creates a really, really good quality blog post because mm-hmm. you've, You've got the outline, you've planned it out ahead of time, you've created that outline, you know what you're going to talk about, then you actually talk about it. And often you kind of figure stuff out in your head yeah. Yeah. as you're speaking it through. You know, it's a great way to to learn, to process, is to actually try and explain it to somebody else. Yeah. So actually, if you write a blog post straight after speaking on video or on a podcast, it tends to be a really kind of concise, really snappy, really effective blog post. So, and it's also quite quick because yeah. you've just processed it. You don't need to spend ages, you know, cogitating over it and planning it out and all this kind of stuff you know you've just done it so you just get in there you can write a 500 600 word blog post in half an hour easy Mm -hmm. if you do it right then and there so that's worthwhile doing and then you can place the the video and the podcast in there yeah so um sorry to go back to your question originally about the effect i just feel like the blog post is kind of a an important part of that and i think the the effect that we've seen is that we've had so much more deep engagement with our content because we have people that have found us via YouTube. Um, they've seen the links, they've popped onto the blog post because that's where we tend to treat as the the mothership, I suppose. You know, yeah. that's the sort of central mm-hmm. point. That's the, the hub of all the, the other stuff. So the video links to the blog post, the podcast links to the blog post, and then the blog post links out to both the video and the podcast and anything else that we produce from it. Um, and we've seen a lot more in our analytics, just anecdotally as well, speaking to users, a lot more people finding us via one, ending up going to the blog post and then going to the other medium as well. So video video searches get onto the blog post and then end up reading more of our articles or they end up subscribing to the podcast. Podcast listeners end up in the blog post, end up watching some videos, subscribing to that channel, getting some more short, sharp material, listening to more of our stuff in general. Mm. So that's the effect we've seen people end up engaging really deeply and going between all sorts of different content, taking this pathway between all of the stuff that we've created. And it, for me, that is what creates loyal fans. That's yeah. created these people that that tell me when I ask them, how did you find us? They tell me, oh, I, I listened to your podcast. And then, you know, I ended up reading about 20 blog posts mm-hmm. and then I your video channel and I really enjoyed that. And, and that's why they got in touch because they got to know us and trust us a lot and and it just turns them into these advocates for your brand that share it out that buy your products they help you out with everything so we've definitely seen an uptick in our engagement since then yeah basically what you've just explained is exactly um how it is solving the purpose that you started off talking about of um taking people on that journey um to get into really know you and, and i think the video aspect is just brilliant for um podcasting because people actually get to see you and it's the whole no like trust isn't it and the fact that you're killing two birds with one stone in a way in terms of turning the um the podcast in well doing the video in your podcast I think is a brilliant idea I think it's really brave actually because it means it's a one take situation on the podcast too which um you know you you're not you can't keep pausing and doing it again doing it again because you put yourself on camera <laughs> um, which I think is a really, um, I think it's a great idea actually because it just means that you have to make some notes like you said, plan ahead, um, have that outline and then just just get get better and better at it I suppose every time that you do it as well. So um, no, I, the results sound brilliant, people getting to know you, touching everyone on every medium, the readers, the listeners, the watchers, it's great. Um, so yeah, any so for someone listening to this, just thinking, I must have a little go at this myself. I'm really inspired. What would you say would be the best just tip to just next podcast episode, give this a go? What would be the best tip for someone to take that step forward? Yeah, I think the the easiest step, the easiest way in, I think, is just to get your smartphone out and start recording your your podcast episodes that way. Buy yourself a, a little smartphone tripod, okay. set it up on the table um, so that you're looking into your phone and you're actually presenting to your phone. You see yourself there, you know, you get a decent background or whatever. Um, and just the main thing is to make sure you're recording decent audio. And it's easy enough to do that with, um, there's a little mic called a Rode SmartLav. So it's R-O-D-E and SmartLav Plus. 
uh, and that plugs right into your smartphone. So you can just click, it's a tie clip mic, so it just wire comes out the bottom, stick it onto your shirt, just right on the front, and then um, you can basically speak into that. And that records really good quality audio, but you're also getting the video into your phone as well. So then when you pull the video off your phone, you can take the audio track off that, publish that as the podcast, but then you've got the video there, you can do whatever you want with it. Mm-hmm. Whether it is put out a few sections of it, whether it's just use one part of it and put that out as a YouTube video, but you've got it there, you can use it for something if you want to. You don't have to use it. You might just throw it away, but at least you've got it there. And it's just as easy a way, really, to record the audio. It's no extra effort above and beyond recording audio in that way. So that's that's the worthwhile way to start with it, I think. That's great. Thank you. Right, I'm going to challenge myself next podcast <laughs> episode to do that. <laughs> um, right, well, great. Thanks. That was just such a great chat. Thank you. So um, just to end with the last question, which is where can people find you um, if they want to see more? Yeah, sure. <laughs> we're uh, over at thepodcasthost.com, which is the website where everything is. Um, and if anybody wants any uh, help with setting up a show or learning a bit more about it, we always have our academy in there. So you'd find that up in the uh, menu bar just under coaching. And uh, we're happy to help anyone there. We've got all our courses and live coaching and stuff in there. So happy to help anyone that wants to set up a podcast. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Colin. I'll put all those contact details in the show notes. And again, thanks very much for being on the show. Really appreciate it. No problem at all. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.